Let's face it, you're probably lonely like me, or I might be the only one in this circumstance. When you wake up to go to work just to spend that hard-earned cash on things you probably should do as a responsible adult, things like paying bills, buying food, ordering another really lewd dakimakura pillow, Okay, I know I'm not the only one here, you just have to admit it. Or you do the complete opposite with the money you earn to survive, and spend almost all of it on the newest PNG waifu that just came out in the most recent gacha game, and slowly watch all that bill money disappear in a mix of anger and depression because not only did you lose your house, but also you never acquired those sweet, sweet anime thighs. What now? Do you leave the gacha world in hopes that you can save up for the apartment you've been eyeing for a year? Hell no, you already entered the rabbit hole of those smoking hot PNGs, so you wait for the next payday to do it all over again. Wait, is it only me? God damn it. Well, let's dive deeper into this pit of never-ending waifus just to see where it began and what all they entail. Gacha games usually appear in the form of a mobile game. In these games, the main mechanic is to have players acquire in-game currency in order to try to roll a summon or whatever it is in the specific game to obtain more playable characters. And most of the time, the chances of you actually getting the character you want is extremely low, thus having you grind to be able to roll again, and again, and again, and again, while trying to get these seemingly impossible characters. The origin of this name came from gachapon machines that could be found all over urban Japan. Gachapon usually requires around 100 to 200 yen to draw a random accessory, and if you don't get the one you want, guess what? You're trying again, and again, and again, and again. However, the first mobile gacha game is considered to be Dragon Collection on a Japanese social platform called Gree in 2010. And from there, the games increased while your wallet simultaneously decreased. But why the hell are they so addicting other than just trying to claim your newly founded waifu with really good looking 2D thigh highs that you only have a 1 in a millionth chance of getting? Well, I could tell you one thing for sure. If you have an addictive personality, then it's probably best just to stay the hell away from gacha games as a whole because after you think you're being conservative and making smart financial decisions, you proceed to log on to your selected game, see a brand new PNG that made you feel oddly excited inside, and proceed to spend your whole life savings in order to acquire said PNG waifu. And after you proceed to spend your house mortgage on this JPEG, you will likely continue to look up dozens of said gacha waifus. Don't look at me like that, you know you do. Honestly, the only conclusive answer I can come up with as to why anyone in their right minds would spend an overly excessive amount of money on gacha games is the hole in their hearts that contain the best 2D waifus, as there is no possible explanation for this rabbit hole that has a watermark saying, this is hell, haha, gotcha. I hate myself. So when you find yourself logging into a gacha game for the very first time, you may find yourself at a loading screen that makes a kid with ADHD on crack look calm. However, once you find out that you can start virtually anywhere, you will come to realize that most gacha games consume one thing that's more than your wallet, this being time. Well, yes, you could become a whale from the get-go and fly by all the challenges. You find yourself really enjoying the challenge and enjoying the game for the actual gameplay. I say this because besides the holy grail of anime girls, the games are actually really fun. You have your daily challenges to acquire free loot or more in-game currency to be able to upgrade your gear and so on. But the gacha experience doesn't start until about mid to late game when you find yourself at a barrier, unable to go any further without a certain amount of resources that you didn't even know existed. From there, you start to farm or grind, searching through the internet trying to figure out where to acquire said resource, and next thing you know, you find yourself three pages into research about how to get your hands on the Chaldean Visionary Flames and Fate Go. Don't judge me. It was fucking hard, okay? Now, most people will look at you after this stage, assuming that you're a total neat that wastes all of his or her money on the newest gacha waifu when they realize we are actually shipping ships with ships now. And the only logical answer you will be able to tell them is simply by saying, Well, you're not wrong, but it's not like I'm gonna stop now, I'm in too deep. And after saying all of that, you will probably lose most of your friends, and the only ones remaining are in the process of setting up an intervention for you. Or, they're also playing said gacha games and arguing with you over which ship is the best. No? 
Probably the first option then. In all reality, you'll never really grasp the idea that you're in too deep until you find yourself going over the same exact stage 500 fucking times trying to obtain more materials to upgrade your gear, building your daily stamina, and doing extensive research about future events when all you wanted to do when you downloaded this game was to collect better waifus than the next guy. This is the exact time you'll realize that you're probably in too deep. But in all honesty, even though it may seem like I'm bashing the players a bit, you can actually have a really fun time playing these games as long as you're willing to get hands-on experience, rather than just seeing them from an outsider's view. While the trailers for the games themselves can make you feel like you're getting ready to watch one of the best anime openings you've ever seen, it's difficult to really grasp what's so fun about them when you see the actual gameplay. It takes strategy and patience to complete a lot of the stages and you find yourself getting addicted to them when the difficulty starts progressing. And next thing you know, two days have passed and you thought you only did your daily challenges. The main reason so many people put off gacha games as a whole when anybody even remotely mentions them is because the beginning structure of the game is unbelievably easy and it seems like there's no challenge whatsoever. You have to spend a considerable amount of time on any number of these games to be able to bypass the bullshit and get to the point of the story where it actually gets interesting. Speaking of the story, most gacha games have the dialogue that represent modern visual novels that can keep you wondering what's going to happen next. Or you could do the complete opposite of this like I used to do and skip every possible mention of the dialogue to get to the smoking hot anime titties. Also, you can't understand the doujins if you have no idea who the hell the characters actually are. So if you want to feel funny in certain places, you can always play them to get a grasp on which character is which, so when you do read said doujins, you can get into them even more, because damn, those gacha game doujins are just so, so good. The appeal of these games, for me at least, comes from the mechanic of the game itself where you can either win or lose depending on the timing you send out a certain waifu. And if you fail at that specific time, it goes back to my previous point, being that sometimes you play the same fucking stage more times than a supercomputer can count. And it's when you finally pass that one stage when you get such a huge feeling of relief and accomplishment that you want to continue to play to be able to recreate that same feeling you just had. We call it fun, while everybody else decides to call it this unspeakable word that doesn't exist in our vocabulary. This being addiction. So at this point, everyone may be wondering what the hell the point of this video is. Am I just trashing gacha games? Did I just spend all this time editing a video that took longer than trying to acquire the best waifu and fake go and arc knights to tell you all that I need help getting out of gotcha hell? Well, you see, when you think about everything that's been set up to this point, you may be on the opposing side and try your best to stay away from gacha games altogether, but the point is actually the opposite. Gacha games are a fantastic way to pass time and keep your inner degenerate entertained with enough dojins to make a porn star look like a saint. Did I mention how great the dojins are? Because again, they're absolutely fantastic. But while you may be turned off from the idea of gacha games because you're scared or it'll slowly take away your whole life savings, most of the time you can still obtain everything you want in the game by being free to play and not spending a dime. There are a shit ton of games to choose from, so you don't have to just stick to the ones in this video because the list goes on for hours. This is just a public service announcement for anyone on edge about stepping into the gacha realm. While it may not be for everyone, you can almost always be guaranteed to have a great time in at least one of these games. And now, good luck escaping gacha hell, everyone. Remember, keep reading dojins.